Greetings, and welcome to another episode of Traditional Sign Writing with John Boy. In this episode we will be looking at block lettering with a simple faux aged effect. This is John Boy, a time-served professional sign writer with over four decades experience in the noble craft of hand-painted lettering, and together, we will guide you through this relatively simple process. The general idea for this video is to create an aged look to the lettering, in a way which will complement the naturally aged and oxidized original paintwork on these 1950s vintage Lambretta side panels. This will not involve the more commonly seen style of faux aging, which although may be more photogenic, is not exactly representative of the way in which paintwork generally ages in a British climate, and as such, the typical sanded through letter technique would not be suitable for this particular commission in which the customer's instructions were to make it look like the lettering was applied over 60 years ago. In this instance, the chipped paintwork of the substrate will automatically create the desired distressed look to the lettering, so that just leaves us with a slightly faded effect to try and replicate. This effect will be achieved by a combination of two very simple tricks of the trade, that is, an additive to the paint combined with a technique. So the paint additive is none other than common household yacht varnish. And the technique is simply dry brushing. You could be forgiven for thinking that overthinning the paint would achieve a similar effect, but the paint must be kept on the heavy side in order to avoid any spreading over this extremely uneven surface. There is no golden rule as to how much varnish must be mixed with the paint. Only trial and error will tell you the desired mix, and you will quickly find out for yourself that each color will require a different mixing ratio. The brush used here is a sable chisel writer, set in a goose feather quill. It is only loaded with about half the amount of paint that would normally be required for standard lettering, and the block lettering is executed in a deliberate manner and by totally ignoring any imperfections in the paintwork. In other words, the brushwork must be applied as if the substrate was blemish-free. All lettering is done freestyle, that is, marked out very roughly and allowing the brush to dictate the letter forms. For real sign writers, even a simple block letter becomes like handwriting recognition, in that each sign writer will eventually develop their own nuances to their lettering, so unfortunately if you only use computer-generated templates, you will never develop your own style. Contrary to most sign writing applications, the most important aspect of this particular job was not legibility, otherwise a different color scheme would have been chosen. So rather than picking a color which would contrast with both the original paintwork and the rusted areas, it had to be approached as if it were a blank canvas being lettered back in the late 1950s. One downside to mixing the enamel with yacht varnish is that it will dry to an extremely high gloss finish, which would be undesirable in this instance. But this can be easily rectified by lightly scuffing with an abrasive pad when dry. Another way would be to use a matte varnish as an additive. Note that there is no attempt to avoid any of the badly rusted areas, as this would compromise the overall flow of the lettering and the paint will generally be absorbed by the oxidation anyhow. But worst case scenario, it will leave a light ghost of the letter, which is perfectly acceptable. If you have watched our previous video on the lettering of a Morris Minor panel van, then you should be familiar with the instructions for working the brush, pulling a stroke, letter formation, and spacing etc. However, if you have not watched it, I would recommend doing so as we will not be going into these again in this video. And as with the previous video, there will be sections of this episode which will be devoid of any commentary, and I would advise you to just watch and pay close attention to the way in which the lettering is constructed. Particularly the order in which the strokes are commenced. 
Whilst it is understandable for amateurs to want to jump in at the deep end by trying to produce multicolored pieces using the fanciest of lettering styles and effects, it is imperative that the relatively simple alphabets known as block capitals is totally mastered before moving on to any other style. Unfortunately this can take years, but it cannot be understated how important it is for the understanding of pretty much every other style and for the development of one's brushwork. You may think that a block letter is easy and lacks artistic merit, but unlike all of these fancy styles, a block letter is totally unforgiving, for example, there are no flourishes, ligatures, extensions etc. to hide behind, effectively meaning that your block lettering will find you out. Whilst there are many many different styles of block lettering, the three main versions that should be concentrated on for the purposes of sign writing, are basically defined by the manner in which the strokes of their open rounded letters are finished. These are as follows. A transport style block, in which the C, the G, the J and the S are terminated at an angle. A Gil San style block, in which the terminations are vertical. And a Helvetica style block in which these letters terminate horizontally. An informal script is used here, followed by an informal italic block for the fantasy phone number. This type of casual lettering should also be developed as a mainstay in every signwriter's arsenal, and it can be developed relatively quickly to show your own particular style. And that completes the lettering on one side, which will then be replicated on the other panel, before moving on to the shadow. The shading is executed with the same brush as was used for the lettering, but with the bristles worked to a narrower width, and held at an approximate angle of 45 degrees to the letter base. As with the black, the red is mixed with varnish to give it a translucent property and it is also browned by adding a drop of the black to the mix. This will take the intensity out of the red, resulting in a more subdued effect overall. A 
An angled narrower way shade is chosen here, which by keeping a relatively large gap between letter and shadow, will prevent these two strong colors from fighting for visual dominance. This color scheme can also be reversed for an equally effective dated or retro look. Note how little paint is loaded onto the brush here. Just enough to stop it dragging. But if it does drag, this can also be used to the advantage of the overall distressed effect. Although the tip of the brush is kept relatively dry, it is equally important to keep the heel of the brush well loaded with paint, as this will prevent the brush from losing its shape or drying up whilst in use. So, from time to time, it is a good idea to fully load the brush with paint, before removing most of it again against the rim of the dipper. As well as using the aforementioned angle of the brush for the shading, controlled pressures and rotations are also utilized in its completion. Note how the red shading is starting to bring the whole thing together. Always remember that the mind will fill in what the eye doesn't see. You can also follow us on Instagram at instagram.com forward slash John Boy underscore sign writer.
And that concludes this episode, so we hope that you have enjoyed it, and with the following photos which will show the panels in their context, we would like to bid you farewell and remind you to consider liking the video and subscribing. You never know, you might just learn something.